stand with me as we read scripture. Sovereign Lord, you have made the heavens and the earth. And by your great power and your outstretched arm, we believe nothing is too hard for you. For what is impossible with man is possible with God. Let's sing together.
morning we declare that there's nothing more powerful in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you that no matter what lifetime tries to throw at us, it cannot overcome us because you have already overcome the grave. So Jesus, we just, we just worship you this morning. We give all the glory, honor, and praise to you this morning. We love you. And we thank you so much for everything you've done for us and you're continuing to do it. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, happy Monday, Grand Canyon. How are you? So we got a few things here we need to cover uh, before I introduce the speaker for today. Uh, tomorrow, I hope that you plan to vote. All right, a few of you. Uh, at the very least, you'll see a passage of Scripture up on the screen right behind me. Uh, I hope that you will at least pray for those in authority over us. Uh, this is an important time in our country's history. Uh, as we all know, there's uh, lots of division and lots of opinions out there on how things should be done, and it needs God's people to rise up and pray. So I want to encourage you to do that, uh, not only tomorrow, but all the time, but tomorrow is a great reminder to pray for our country. Uh, secondly, those of you that are seniors, there are a few seniors here, GCU wants to hire you, and so in the ACE Center in Saguaro Hall on Wednesday from 11 to 1, they're going to be interviewing those of you who will be graduating here soon uh, to work at Grand Canyon. So if you're interested, uh, go to the ACE Center there at Saguaro Hall. Uh, you may not know this, but some of you pay attention to all the people that help make uh, a chapel service happen. And one of those that we look past almost every Monday are those who work in public safety. And uh, they do a tremendous job here to serve and support us and make this a a safe atmosphere. One of those, uh, his name is Arnold Washington. Um, yeah, some of you know Arnold. Arnold lost his son this past weekend. And so uh, that team is really hurting today. So I would really encourage you, uh, obviously Arnold's not here today, uh, but the next time you see him in the lobby or the, uh, of the arena or somewhere around campus, uh, encourage him, maybe give him a big old hug and let him know that you're praying for he and his family. Would you do that? All right, a couple other things I want to uh, mention to you before uh, we get going any further. Uh, tonight at 6 p.m., the women's basketball team will debut right here in the arena at 6 p.m. against Benedictine. On Friday night, they'll play Incarnate Word at 6 right here in the arena as well. Women's volleyball, um, Thursday night at 6 p.m., and men's basketball, Saturday against Delaware State here in the arena. So you got all kinds of opportunities to come and cheer and, you know, scream, get all that stuff out of your system. All right, uh, ice hockey on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So ice hockey players, uh, there's a few of you here. All right. So how many of you need a three-day weekend? Well, that would be next weekend. So next Monday, no classes. Veterans Day will be observed next weekend. So that means no chapel. The f That's the appropriate response. Very good. The week after that is fall break. So we're going to be off for two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Praises. All right. So you have two Mondays off. Uh, we won't be having chapel. Then we'll have only two chapels following that. So the Monday right after fall break. And then we'll have a Christmas chapel. We'll be done for the end of uh, the school year. Incredible how fast it's gone. So that means no speaker next week or the week after. Ron Merrill from the Heights Church. Yeah, Ron's a favorite around here. He'll be here in two weeks. So I look forward to having him in chapel uh, next time that we gather. Today is Robert Watson from Sun Valley Community Church out in East Valley. Give him a big cheer, would you please? All right. Well, hey, guys. Thanks for letting me be a part of chapel with you guys. I'm really excited to be here. Uh, I'm at a church way out in the East Valley. And so I, 
I made quite the journey. It was like 38 minutes. It was brutal. But I made it here and uh, excited to be hanging out with all of you guys. I want to just uh, tell you a little bit about myself. I've been working at the church that I'm at right now. It's called Sun Valley Community Church. Been there for coming up on 15 years uh, at that church, which I know what you're thinking. Robert, you look way too young. That's impossible. I know, right? But uh, I, apparently I've gotten a little bit older. I do have three kids. Here's a picture of my family. This is my wife and, uh, and our three kids. And so on the, on the left there, that's, that's my sweet little Emma. And then in the middle, you got Corbin and then Gabriel, who's our oldest. If you ask either boy, what's your job? Both of them will say to protect Emma. We've trained them well. And so that's, that's my kids. And then uh, that, that beautiful lady standing there, that's my wife, Lindsay. I met my wife, Lindsay, when I was in college. And went on a mission trip to Africa, and we got seated next to each other on the airplane. We didn't really know each other. In fact, our initial impression of each other, we didn't really like each other. Uh, but we got seated next to each other on the airplane, and when you're on an airplane back then, we didn't have the television screen in front of you, you know, that's on like the headrest of there. So it, so it was the craziest thing. You had to talk to people. And, and so I started talking to Lindsay, and she started talking to me. We got to know each other a little bit. And by the time I got to Africa, I was like, oh, dang. I like this girl, but there was a problem. She didn't like me yet. So I was undeterred. And so while we were in Africa, you know, I kept trying to be like extra sweet, extra kind, all of that. Uh, and then on the flight home, we're flying back and we're getting to talking again. And, and at this point, like I am just smitten. Like I, I am donezo, like I'm in love with this girl, like, oh my gosh. And, and she, again, she's just kind of starting to notice me a little bit. And so we're flying, you know, over the U.S. We're getting close back to Phoenix and... We've been talking this whole time, and I say, I have the answer to all of your problems. Now, real quick, all the guys in the room, the line that I am sharing with you right now, never use it. Okay? A Co couple reasons. Number one is it's a terrible line. Okay? It's not a good line. And number two, it's my line. Get your own line. Okay? <laughs> And so I said, I have the answer to all of your problems, because that's what she was looking for, right? The an and I said, you and I just need to fall madly in love with each other. <laughs> and here's what she said. You ready? Hang on. Hey. Oh, it gets better. It gets better. Here's what she says to me. Nothing. <laughs> Total silence. Awkward uncomfortable silence. And so I did what any one of us guys in this room would do. I went, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> and then she did fall madly in love with me. And here we are. We've got three kids to thank for that, uh, or that can thank for that. And so we met, we met in college. And I got to tell you, college, college is a tough time. Because in college, you're trying to figure out who you are and, and what makes you unique. And, and in college, I was constantly, not out loud, but in my mind, asking the question, am I valuable? Am I valuable? And who am I? And what makes me valuable? And, and I thought, man, if I have enough friends, then maybe that would mean that, that I'm, I'm valuable. If I was funny enough, or if I was cool enough, or if I was good enough at a certain sport or a certain thing, or if I was just really, really smart, then maybe, just maybe, I would be valuable. And so I was constantly trying to fill in the blank of, I'm valuable if, fill in the blank. I would be valuable if I could do this, if I could look a certain way, act a certain way, be a certain way, get a certain title, make a certain amount of money, then I would be valuable. And I was constantly trying to figure that out, and it was stressing me out. In fact, I was dealing with all kinds of anxiety of how, how did other people perceive me? What were their thoughts of me? And constantly thinking if I was in a social setting, like, does this person like me? Does that person, what, what's going on here? And I was wrestling with identity. I was wrestling with, am I valuable? And in the midst of all of that, we live in a world that's full of lies. And so there's lies that, that will kind of whisper around and sometimes they get louder and louder that says, you're not valuable unless, fill in the blank. 
and, and we tend to, to speak this lie over other people, you would be valuable if you did this certain thing, if you behaved a certain way, if you dressed a certain way, if you looked like this, then you would be valuable. And these lies, they begin to rattle around in our minds and we become anxious. Now, Jesus gives us a healthy dose of perspective in his Sermon on the Mount. This is one of my favorite sermons of all time. Jesus gives this sermon uh, 2,000 years ago, and the whole sermon's like 15 minutes long, but it is really, really good. Uh, my sermon's going to be a little bit longer today, and it's not going to be as good, but we're going to read what Jesus said because it's phenomenal. In Matthew chapter 6, Jesus is kind of going on this roll, and he's talking about all these things, and in Matthew chapter 6, verse 25, he says, therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life. Just want, just want those words to, to sink in here for a moment. Jesus says, do not worry about your life. My immediate response to that is, well, Jesus, uh, that's kind of hard to just not worry. That, that, that seems like, you know, about what, Jesus? Oh, my whole life, everything. Okay, yeah, piece of cake, Jesus. I'm just going to not worry about literally anything. He says, don't worry about your life. And then he gets more specific. He says, what you will eat or drink or about your body, what you will wear. And he says, is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? And when Jesus says, do not worry, the Greek word there, it's merimnao, and it means don't be anxious, don't be divided. Jesus says, we get so worked up on things, we get so worried about things, we're like, what about this, and oh, what about this, and I, I want to follow Jesus, but man, I'm so worried about what people think of me, and I, I don't know, I want to impress this person, but I also, I, I feel this conviction about something, and, and he says, don't, don't get so divided, don't be so anxious about all of these things, how people perceive you, what you're going to wear, what you're going to eat, and all that, he goes, okay, just everybody take a chill pill, verse thir uh, 26, he says, look at the birds of the air, so Jesus just got done saying, don't worry about your life. And then he has this ADD moment where he's like, look, a bird. And he says, look at that. Look at the birds of the air. He says, they do not sow or reap or stow, store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? And Jesus asks a question that I believe every single one of us needs to answer. This question of, are you not more valuable than they? What is it that makes you valuable? How do you know your value? When I was in college, I learned to cook some pretty incredible things. And at the top of the list was a grilled cheese sandwich. And now, how, how many in here, you know how to make a grilled cheese sandwich? Just raise a hand. Uh, okay. Um, I'm about to school you who don't know how to make a grilled cheese sandwich. So what I did is I put a piece of bread there. There's some butter on that bread. I pre-buttered it. I would do that here, but I only have so much time. Okay, so it's uh, butter, and then it's bread, and then here you, this is really fancy cheese with plastic around it, okay? And so you, you put the cheese on the bread. Now, I'm going to tell you my secret ingredient because I trust you guys not to share it with anybody. This is just for us. This is a safe place, Okay. I'm going to give you the Watson family secret ingredient of a grilled cheese sandwich. You ready? It's a second piece of cheese. Yeah. Thank you for the applause up there. You guys appreciate a good grilled cheese sandwich. Okay, so, so second, piece, second piece of cheese, and, and, then, and then the bread's going to go on there just like that, and we're going to give that a minute just kind of heat up. Now, I want to ask you the question because we're trying to figure out what is our value? How do we know if we're valuable? So I want to ask, what do you think in your own mind right now, what do you think the value of this grilled cheese sandwich is? Just ponder that, and I'm, I'm going to read to you just the ingredients that are in there and the prices. So for two slices of bread, it cost me 23 cents. Two slices of cheese, because, you know, secret ingredient, you got to do two slices of cheese. Uh, that would be 21 cents, and the butter, it's about, I had to calculate this out, it's about seven cents worth of, of butter. This is, this is where it gets tricky. You ready? Thank you, thank you. Aren't you glad you came to chapel? You're like, man, what did you learn? I learned how to make a grilled cheese sandwich. Wow, that's fantastic. Uh, so you flip it over, and now it's, it's got to melt the other side as well. Okay, you guys don't care about that. So the butter, seven cents. The total cost of this is 51 cents for the Watson family secret recipe grilled cheese sandwich. So I want to ask the question again, is that the, is that the value of a grilled cheese sandwich? The value 
of something is the price that somebody's willing to pay. So I just want to ask, uh, how many would be willing to pay more than 51 cents for this grilled cheese sandwich right now? Actually, raise, if you are willing, now here's the deal. Uh, I, I want to ask, who would be willing to spend like $5 on this grilled cheese sandwich? $5. Okay, uh, I, I met somebody in the front row. They were eating a grilled cheese sandwich before this started, and they're like, you can get them for 5 bucks here. It's the best deal on campus. Uh, how many for this grilled cheese sandwich with the secret ingredient would be willing to spend $10, $15, $20, cash. It's gotta, you got to have the cash on you. I don't take PayPal, okay? I, this has got to be cash. How many? $30. We still got one? We still got one over here. $40, $40, $50, $50. Do you have $50 cash? Do we still have any hands up over? Okay, $50, going once, going twice. Come up here with your $50 cash right now. Yeah, no, walk up here. Yeah, you should have known what you were getting yourself into. Uh, I need to see that cash. Come on up here. Come on up here. Come on. No, like this is happening. This is, this is, going, this is going down right now. This is happening. Yes. Give her a round of applause as she comes up here. Hang on. It's kind of burning a little bit. Uh, let, me, let me just flip that over. Your wallet's in your room. Does anybody have any cash on them? They can spot her. Does anybody have a $20 bill that they would loan her? $20 bill. Uh, can, you, can you bring up? I need cash, guys. This is, I got a long drive home. I'm going to be hungry on that ride home. We got somebody coming here to spot you cash. Oh, we got a couple people. We're, looks like we're taking an offering. We got, hang on, hang on. Here, here we go. Let me see that. We got ourselves. $60, $60 for a grilled cheese sandwich. Do you, do you have like really high student loans or anything that you're like, you're doing okay? Okay, good, because you should not have spent $60 on a grilled cheese sandwich. Uh, here it is. There's a, wait, hang on. There you go. There's your grilled cheese sandwich. Thank you. Hey, I'm just kidding. You guys can get your cash back. I can't, I can't possibly. The, the IRS would be all over me for that. All right. Thank you, guys. Man, this is such a great school. You're like, hey, a terrible investment in a grilled cheese sandwich. Here's my cash. I'll help you out. No big deal. I don't know you, but I trust you, and you're, you seem like you're good with money. So, yeah, uh, way to go, guys. Way to, way to help her out. So the value of that grilled cheese sandwich, I want to ask you now, what is the value of the grilled cheese sandwich? This is not hypothetical. What is the value of that grilled cheese sandwich? One more time. What is the value of that grilled cheese sandwich? $60 because somebody collectively was willing to spend $60 on that grilled cheese sandwich. Now, you might have looked at it and gone, yeah, I don't think it's worth that. But here's the deal. Somebody was willing to pay that price for the grilled cheese sandwich. There's another grilled cheese sandwich I want to tell you about. This grilled cheese sandwich, uh, I got a picture of it right here. A lady made this grilled cheese sandwich, and she took a bite out of it, and then she looked at it, and she goes, I think that's the face of Mary on the grilled cheese sandwich. <laughs> you guys are seeing it now. And so she went, I can't eat this grilled cheese sandwich. So she put it in a case with cotton balls that you see there, and she put it on her nightstand next to her bed. And for years, she believed that the Mary grilled cheese sandwich would bring her good luck. And she was right, because one day she would decide to auction it off on eBay. And so she put this grilled cheese sandwich, after years of being on her nightstand, with the cotton ball, she put it on eBay, and it auctioned off for $28,000 for a partially eaten grilled cheese sandwich. So if you're paying attention right now, the value of that grilled cheese sandwich would be $28,000. What is the value of something? It is the price that somebody is willing to pay. So back to Jesus' brilliant question. Jesus asked the question, are you not more valuable than they? 
And for some of us, we don't know how to answer that question because we're still trying to figure out what makes us valuable. We're still trying to figure out how to fill in the blank. I'm valuable if A, B, or C. I'm valuable if I can accomplish these things. I'm valuable if I can meet some kind of standard, some kind of pressure maybe that somebody's put on me, maybe pressure I've put on myself, then I would be valuable. And Jesus asked the question, are you not more valuable than the birds of the air? And I want to answer that question for you. The answer is emphatically, yes, you are. You are far more valuable, and I believe you are far more valuable than you even realize, even if you have a pretty high like, sense of like, no, I'm pretty valuable, Robert. Uh, I believe you're even more valuable than you think. I showed you a picture of my three little kids. My three little kids, they have no idea how valuable they are. They have no idea that I would do anything for them, that I, I would give my life for them. They might hear that. They might kind of understand, okay, Dad, yeah, you love us. We get it. They have no idea how valuable they are. And I believe you and me, we have no idea how valuable we are either. See, I would do anything to protect my kids. I would do anything to help my kids. I, I love them so much. I, I can't even put a price on the value that they have to me in my life. And at the same time, I know because of what Scripture teaches us, because of what this book that God has given us so that we would know who he is and we would know who we are and we would understand our value. In this book, we have this incredible love story of this God who spoke the universe into existence. He spoke the cosmos into existence. Every star that you've ever seen in the sky, every galaxy, every photon of light, every particle in this universe, every particle in you, every quantum of energy God spoke into existence. And that same God is crazy about you. He loves you. And he says you're valuable because we know value is the price that somebody is willing to pay. Romans 5.8 says this, but God demonstrates his own love for us. It's not just the kind of love like, oh, I say I love you or it's just words. No, no, no. He demonstrates because true love is action oriented. He demonstrates his love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God in the flesh. That, that God who spoke all that into existence would empty himself to take on the form of a baby in a manger and to live a, a perfect life and then to choose to allow him to be sacrificed on your behalf to pay the penalty for your sin and my sin that, that we couldn't pay that debt. He paid it for us so that we might be made right in our relationship with God. He was willing to give his life for you, the God who spoke all things into existence, that is how valuable you are. There's no need to fill in the blank, I'm valuable if this, I'm valuable if that. You don't need to fill in that blank because God died for you. He paid the ultimate price and value is the price somebody's willing to pay. That's how valuable you are to God. You're precious to him. In Ephesians, Paul writes this, Ephesians 2, 8, 8 through 10, he says, For it is by grace you have been saved, meaning you didn't earn it, you didn't work for it. It's a gift. It's a gift that God's, God gives you. And, and, and a gift, you don't have to earn it, you don't have to work for it, you don't have to, no, no, a gift is something that, that you receive. It is by grace you have been saved through faith, meaning we trust Jesus, we trust the work that he's done, and he gifts us this salvation. This is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by work so that no one can boast. And then verse 10, I love this, for we are God's handiwork. The Greek word there is, is poema. It's where we get our word poem from, that you are a masterpiece. You are a work of art. God calls you. And I don't know what you see when you look in the mirror and maybe you see all the flaws and all the things you wish were different and all the things that you feel like you can't measure up to and, and all the things, maybe there's things from your past that you regret that you're ashamed of and it's become your identity and you're going, well, I'm all these things that I've done wrong. But God looks at you and he says, I see a masterpiece, a work of art, a poem. We are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus 
to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. My desire for us walking out of here today, myself included, is that we would stop thinking or saying I'm valuable if. And that we would replace that with I am valuable, period. No matter what somebody else says, no matter what maybe I think about myself, no, no, no. I know because God has demonstrated his love for me. He's paid the ultimate price that I am valuable because value is the price that somebody is willing to pay. And Jesus gave his life for you. That's how precious you are to him. He loves you. He's crazy about you. And I love in this passage that he says, listen, listen, it, it, it's not by works, it, it's by grace that you're saved through faith. It's about what God has done, not what you do. You receive that gift, but here's the deal. He, he's created you to be a masterpiece, but listen, to do good works, to serve others. He's rescued you, he's paid the price for your sin for all those who have put their trust in him and said yes to following Jesus. He has adopted you into the family that your identity is that you are a child of the most high king, God who spoke the universe into existence. You're his child. He's crazy about you, but here's the deal. He says, now that you're part of the family, let's go out and let's serve people. Because there's people who aren't part of the family yet. There's people who don't know Jesus. They're still trying to figure out their identity. They're still trying to fill in the blank. I'm valuable if. And they need to know that there's a God who loves them. And he's gifted us this gift of salvation. And he's created all of these works of art that we have spread out across the room right now for good works to serve those who don't yet know Jesus. You guys are saved for a purpose. To serve those who one day will be saved as they put their trust in Jesus. Don't miss the opportunity God's given you. And whatever lies have been rattling around in your head, the anxiety that you're divided and you're feeling that pressure of who am I and am I valuable, would you replace that with the truth that God loves you and he says you're far more valuable than you realize. So that we might go out with confidence and share the love that's been demonstrated to us with those who don't yet know Jesus. It's our calling in this life. And I'm going to pray for us that God would do that through us. Would you pray with me? Father, thanks for every student here. All the faculty, those who are, are, are here right now. God, thanks for the gift of salvation. God, thanks that in a world that says you're only valuable if you can do these things, if you can accomplish these things. God, that you have replaced that lie with truth that we are valuable, period. You've demonstrated that. You've proven that. God, would you help us to receive it and to walk in confidence as we use the gifts you've given each of us to serve others so that they might know that same love you've demonstrated for us. Jesus, thank you for the sacrifice you made on the cross on our behalf, the ultimate payment. We love you, and we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, go enjoy lunch. Thank you, guys. Go get a grilled cheese sandwich. We'll see you guys later.